Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a new solid state drive from Samsung. This is their T7. We've previously looked at their T5 and the T3, which are the older versions. This new one performs better, and it has a fingerprint sensor now integrated into the package, so you can lock it down and encrypt it, and then very easily unlock the drive with just a push of a finger, and it seems to be working pretty well. So we're going to step through this product here in just a second to see how it works and how it performs. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this drive is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. There are two versions available. There's a 500 gig version, which is the one I have here, and there's also a one terabyte version. The 500 gig starts at 129, the terabyte is $100 more. There's also one that you can get in silver with the same capacity and price configuration there. It's made out of metal like the old ones were, very nice feeling, nice and rugged. It's not waterproof, but I think it should be able to survive some moderate levels of abuse while traveling. You got the fingerprint sensor here, and then ringed around it is an LED light that will give you drive usage indications along with prompts for the fingerprint when you go to read it. Uh, so that's pretty nice. You'll see how that works in a second. We have a USB Type-C port here for connecting it up to your devices. Now this has a USB Gen 2 connector on board, which means you'll get the best performance on newer computers that have one of those Gen 2 ports. You can find out if you've got one of those ports in your product specifications or in the computer's manual. Uh, the good news though is that it will work with just about anything with a USB port and they give you cables for all configurations. So you get a USB-C to USB-C cable for connecting it up to newer machines that have a USB-C connector. And you have a USB-C to USB-A connector here as well. So no matter what you got, again, it should work. Now, if you want to get a longer cable than what it comes with, make sure you buy a cable that is a Gen 2 compatible cable. All these USB-C cables look alike, but they perform very different. So just read very carefully when you shop to get the cable that will get you the best performance if you do want to go longer. But again, they've give, given you everything in the box here you need to get started. And I like that we have two distinct cables here and not some out-of-spec adapter that we often see these companies providing with their hard drives. Now out of the box, the drive will work like just about any hard drive. You plug it in and it mounts on your computer and you're ready to go. But if you wish to use the fingerprint sensor to better secure it, you'll need to install the Samsung software. This runs on Android, Mac, or Windows. And when you get that software installed, you can set up a password to encrypt it, and you have the option of also getting a fingerprint going. And as you can see here, the software was reading my fingerprint through the drive. It stores everything on the drive, though, so you can uh, get it going on a computer without the software installed later, and I'll show you that in a second. It'll store up to four fingerprints, so you could have four of your own fingers or maybe have some coworkers or other people that you want to authorize use the drive program theirs in. And once those fingerprints are programmed, you just plug it into a computer and unlock it. Let's take a look and see how it works. We're gonna plug it into my Mac here, which does not have the Samsung software installed to see what happens. All right, so we've got my Mac here ready to go. And remember, this Mac has never had any Samsung software installed on it. And we're going to see if we can unlock it with my fingerprint and use it. So I'm gonna plug in the drive here real quick. And what's gonna happen is we are going to actually see the drive mount, but we're not getting at my files here. This is a read-only partition that Samsung uses to let people install software if they need to. And the reason why it has some software here is that if you opted not to use the fingerprint and just use a password, you'll need to have some software to type the password in so the drive can unlock. But if you use the fingerprint option, you don't need the software. So if we just go back to my hard drive here so our window doesn't go away, I'm going to go and just tap my finger on top of the hard drive here. You can see it lit up blue, and now it's going to do its thing. And now it looks like we are unlocked, and check it out. If we go over here to Keep Out, which is the actual name of the drive, I can now access some photos that I put on here earlier. So I've got me with our rocket, and I've got some other stuff here, and that was all safely uh, secured and encrypted on the drive until 
I used my fingerprint to unlock it. And then, of course, if we uh, eject that drive, we can go back to where we were before. Let's try out a few fingerprints that I didn't register to see if it keeps us out. All right, so we have reset the drive, and you can see we're back on having that read-only partition again. And if I maybe put my pinky down here, which I didn't register, you can see that it's going to read it but it's going to blink at us to indicate that that finger is not working. I'll take another finger out here and try that one and see if it will let me in with that. Again, we've got more blinking, uh, but if I go over to a finger that I know I've registered with the drive here and put it down there, you'll see that it very quickly unlocks the drive and gives us our keep out partition once again. So to recap here, the drive is not encrypted when you buy it. So if your intention is just to use it as a hard drive, plug it into whatever you want, it's just gonna work. If you want to encrypt it and lock it down with a password and a fingerprint, you then need to install the software on one machine only to get it going. Once those fingerprints and passwords are set up, uh, you can plug it into anything without software and unlock it with the fingerprint. If you want to unlock it with passwords, you will need software. Now, I did install the software on my Windows computer here to get those fingerprints set up initially, and I was annoyed that the software stays persistent even when you're done with it. So I just plugged the drive in here. As you can see, we got the uh, little read-only partition showing up here, and look what's going on behind it. It's got the Samsung software here prompting me to uh, touch it with my finger to unlock the partition, which it just did. But that software is always running in the background even after a reboot. It's unnecessary because we don't need the software every time to unlock the drive, yet it is there. Uh, the one thing you do get is the ability to update its firmware if there is a firmware update available, but I don't think there's any need for this software to be running after you get the encryption set up, and I hope that they might make some adjustments or give the user some options to have it not run in the background. I just don't like having things running in the background on my computer, and right now this is always running unless I uninstall the software. If I uninstall the software, no impact on the drive, I could easily just reinstall it later and go back in and change things from there. Uh, but you do have the ability to change the fingerprints here and change the password or turn off the encryption completely here with the software. So it's pretty easy to use, not many features to it, but it's annoyingly persistent, and I don't believe it should be persistent at all. Now, I tried it on a bunch of other devices, didn't have any issues with it, even with the fingerprint unlocking. One note of caution, though, on Android. I have two Android phones. They're both Google Pixel phones and they don't read XFAT over USB, at least my two don't. So the drive worked, but the phones wanted to format it into a compatible file system, which of course would erase my partition. So if you have some issues with Android, you might need to format the drive to be compatible, but everything else has been fine as I've been plugging it into other devices. I was even able to get it to work here with my iPad Pro, and by extension, this should also work with uh, other iPads and iPhones with the lightning to USB connector. So when I connect it up here, as you can see, uh, we have that read-only partition here accessible to us. And then if I go ahead and validate my fingerprint, uh, it will then switch us over to the other readable and writable partition, my keep out partition here. And there we've got the photos that we were looking at on the computer. So it seems to work just fine, again, without any software needed to unlock across other devices. So let's take a look now at performance, and this is the Blackmagic speed test running on my MacBook Pro. And you can see out of the gate here for its sequential read and write testing here, we're getting about 822 megabytes per second on writes and about 885 or so on reads. Now note though that once you go back and forth on this test over time, it'll slow down a little bit on the writes. So I think the realistic expectation here for sequential writing for video capturing and copying files and whatnot uh, should be about 800 megabytes per second. However, I'm not seeing any decline in performance when using the encryption versus not using the encryption. So it looks like whatever they're doing to encrypt here is not going to impact your performance at all. And although this is not the fastest SSD out on the market, it's really very consistent in its performance. It hadn't really dipped below uh, what you're seeing there over a very long period of time running this test. And I think that's often more important sometimes than a super fast drive 
that will slow down after 30 seconds or a minute of having data written to it. So you're going to see a lot of these NVMe drives out there that are coming down in price and advertise really fast speeds. In fact, Samsung uh, has a Thunderbolt version of their uh, X5 SSD line that will deliver some really crazy speeds. But once that drive heats up and those caches fill up, they slowed down dramatically. So this one, throughout all of my testing, was staying, again, very consistent uh, throughout those reads and writes of sequential data. So very impressed here because it's performing well, better than the old drives, and it's performing consistently, which is very important. And we also ran the Crystal Disk Mark test to get a feel for how it did, not only with its sequential reads and writes, but also random reads and writes. Uh, you can see those random reads and writes below the sequential test there at the top. And it performed okay and on par with other SSDs that are out there. Uh, this is where the NVMe SSDs tend to do a little bit better. Uh, so if you are looking at doing game playing or uh, loading an operating system or something where you're constantly randomly hitting the drive with stuff, I think you might do a little bit better with one of those versus this one. Uh, but this one does have the advantage in being more consistent in its sequential reads and writes. So that's going to do it for this look at the Samsung T7. I really like what they've put together here because the fingerprint sensor is not a gimmick. It's a differentiating feature from the multitude of SSD choices that are out there on the market. It works really well. It's super fast. And what's interesting is that it is convenient. Oftentimes when we talk about securing our data and encrypting it, we're adding inconvenience to provide that layer of protection. Here it's very convenient to use it, and I think that's something that uh, they've executed quite well here. Just plug it in without any software, tap the fingerprint reader, and you're in. If you happen to lose the drive and somebody picks it up, they're not getting in because they don't have your fingerprint or password, and they've done a really good job here uh, getting that feature integrated in hardware into this device. And I think if you're looking for something to easily secure your data but want the performance that an SSD can provide, this is going to be a good choice. And I think they've put together a really nice product here. I do hope they get rid of some of that persistence in their software. Maybe in a few months when you're watching this video, they'll have done that. And I'll put a comment down below to update the video. Uh, but beyond that, I can't find much to complain about here. Really nice, consistent performance. Again, there are faster SSDs out there, but those faster ones are not as consistent. And this does offer a nice improvement in performance over its predecessors. So that's going to do it now for the Samsung T7. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.